Welcome to EasyViz. Today I'll be showing you two different ways you can implement a previous period comparison. First, I'll show you how you can do this with LOD calculations. Then I'll show you how you can do it using a blended data source. We'll be using the Superstore dataset if you want to follow along. So you've built this awesome dashboard and presented it to your stakeholders. They immediately say, this is great, but how can we compare these figures to the previous year? Let's go through a couple of ways we can create measures that compare the same value for a different time period. One method of doing previous period calculations is using level of detail calculations. So on a new sheet, let's just drag our sales into this text so we can see what we're doing. And you'll notice that I have a filter for the order date. The filter simply just checks if the order date is between the start and end date, which are two parameters I created. We'll just show those parameters. Let's make the text a bit larger so we can see. So currently this sum of sales measure is being filtered by the order date, which has to be between the 1st of January, 2022 to 31st of December, 2022. So to compare this figure to a previous period, you're going to need a calculation that can ignore this filter. To achieve this using LODs, you're going to need to create a column that encompasses all our data. So I'm just going to create a calculated field called all data, and it's just going to be a hard coded text that says all. So let's start with a very simple LOD and we'll build on it as we go. Create a new calculated field and we'll use the fixed LOD and we'll fix it on the all data column we just created. And we'll just return the sum of sales. Now, because our all data column encompasses our entire data set, this LOD calculation will just return the sum of the sales over our entire data set. Let's call this sales LOD. Let's drag our new LOD calculation into the text box and see how that looks. So you can see even though our sum of sales is returning the correct value when filtered, our LOD calculation is returning the total sum of sales, ignoring all of these filters. With this as a starting point, we can now modify this formula to account for the order date to compare a previous period. Now this formula might get a bit complicated, so I'm just going to format this a little bit to make it easier to read. Let's use an if statement to check whether the order date is within the start and end date. adding this if statement, we're only going to return the sales if the order date is within our two parameters. Now you can see our LOD calculation returns the exact same value as our normal sum of sales. But we want to return the sum of sales for a previous period, let's say same time last year. So let's modify this formula again. Once again, I'm going to start with some formatting to make this formula a little bit more readable. So instead of checking if the order date is between the start and end date, we want to offset this by a year. So let's use the date add formula and we'll offset by negative one year on both of these dates. And just like that, our sales LOD calculation will now always sum the sales with a one year offset to your start and end date parameters. This formula is great. It works for dynamic dates. You can change these to whatever you want and it will still calculate the correct previous period. However, if we introduce other filters, such as segment, go the filter. You can see how the LOD formula isn't changing, but my actual figure is changing. To make this LOD calculation work with other filters, when you introduce a filter, you have to make it apply to context. That way, our filter will calculate first before our LOD calculates. Now, you can see when we change the segment, our LOD calculation and our sum of sales both change correctly. 
First, let's rename our LOD calculation sales PY. Let's use this LOD calculation to create some year-on-year -year percentage calculations. Create a new calculated field and use a formula that looks like this. We're just going to get the difference between the sales from the current period and the previous period, and then we're just going to divide it by the sum of the previous period to get the year-on-year -year growth. Call this YOY percent. Drag this over to our text and let's format it to be a percentage. I like my year on year percentages to have an arrow and be color coded. So let's see how we can do that. We'll need two calculated fields that return whether the year on year calculation is positive or negative. So if we check the year on year percentage is greater than zero, then we'll return the year on year percentage and we'll call this YOY percent positive. Let's duplicate this formula, edit it, and we'll just check if the year on year percentage is less than zero and return the year on year percentage and call this one YOY percent negative. Let's get rid of this old year on year percentage and put the positive and negative values in to have a look. Let's edit our text box and we'll make the positive percentage green we'll make the negative percentage red so we can see the difference. So at the moment, because our sales are going up from the previous year, our green value is showing up. But if I go to a different period where our sales are going down, we can see the red value will show up. Next, let's use formatting to show some arrows in the correct percentage values. Right click, default properties, number format, and we'll use the custom format and use a format that looks like this. You can see that uh, Tableau handily gives us three sections, which gives a format for the positive value, the negative value, and a zero value. You can get these arrows off any ASCII website. You just Google it and then just copy these arrows and paste it into your formula. And just like that, our percentage is now showing as a percent with an arrow and the correct color. We'll go back to our 2021 year just to see how that looks as a positive percentage. So right click on the positive, default properties, number format, custom, and paste that same formula in. Let's rename these formulas for sales. And now our formulas are ready for implementation into our actual dashboard. So let's go to the summary section. We'll drag these positive and negative values into the text box. Then we'll format it. We'll make the positive green and we'll make the negative red, just like we did before. We'll put these on the same line. So when they show up, they don't show up on different lines. And we'll just make these a little bit smaller. I like to show the actual values in the tooltips. So let's do that. We'll drag the sales PY into details. And then in the tooltips, We'll make the sales show up first, followed by the sales PY, and then we'll put the year on year movement underneath that. To make this work for your other summary figures, we're going to need to create the same set of measures for each one. So let's do that. Let's have a look how that looks on our dashboard and we can see we have all of our three measures and now we have our year on year movements underneath them. If we go to a different order period, we can see all of these calculations will dynamically change their colors and arrows based on the movement itself. This is a great lightweight calculation for these summary figures. However, it becomes a little bit more tricky when you're implementing this calculation into the category. Here I have a category graph for sales. Let's go take a look. Let's drag our sales PY calculation into columns and we will replace the label with the sales PY. You can see it's just returning one static figure. That's because our LOD calculation doesn't take into account this subcategory rows that we're using in our visualization. 
You could fix this just by changing your LOD to include the subcategory. And while this will work for most of your visualizations, it won't work for when your date is actually in your visualization. You can see here, since I have my order date in my actual visualization, if I simply change my LOD to include the order months and drag that into our rows, it doesn't return any values. To make prior period calculations for this scenario, I like to use data blending. Let's start on a new worksheet so we can clearly see how this data blending will work. Right click your data source and duplicate it. Rename your new data source. Just put a PY at the end of whatever it's called. Now I want to link these two data sets on order date but I need an order date that I can manipulate. So I'm going to rename this to order date original, and I'm just gonna create a new calculated field called order date. And for now, it'll just be order date original. With your original data source selected, let's drag in the order month by right click dragging and bring in the discrete date. We'll format this to make it a little bit more legible. We'll just make this month, 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 year, year. Next, let's drag our sales measure in. So we'll just drag the sum of sales into here. Now let's go to our PY data source and we'll drag the sum of sales into here as well and see how that looks. You can see that's all working fine. Now to offset the prior year sales, we need to offset the date in our blended data source. Right click your order date and edit. We're going to date add year one to the order date. Now nothing happens because our order month is still referencing our original order date. So we'll make this reference our new offset order date. And now you can see our sales are correctly offset by one year. If we look at our order month for Jan 20, we have 18,000, which is the actual sales. And if we look at the sales from our PY data source, it's showing the value from Jan 19, which is what we want. Let's see how this interacts with filters. Let's drag our segment filter in and select all. We can see everything went red and it's no longer working. If we hover over the sales, we can see it says that data sources that contain logical tables cannot be used as a secondary source for data blending. I won't go into too much detail here, but basically, Tableau data sources have two layers, a logical layer and a physical layer. If your filter isn't in your visualization, like in this case, you can't use the logical layer. To remove the logical layer, just go to your data source and delete any logical layer joins. So we'll just remove this returns table. If you need a join, you have to do the join in the actual physical layer like this. For the purposes of this demo, I'm not going to join any tables and we'll go into our PY data source and also remove this join. Now let's go back to our sheet and you can see everything is working again. Now let's expose our segment filter and show this interaction. You can see when I change my segment, the only thing that changes is my current year sales. Our previous year sales is not changing. To make filters work when you're blending the data source Go to your blended data source and make sure whatever filters are in here are also linked in the blending field. So now you can see when I change, everything changes correctly. Now let's implement this into our actual dashboard. Let's start with the category visualization. Let's remove our old sales PY calculation and we will select our blended data source and we'll bring in the sales from here. You can see with the blending data source by default, it will only join on the fields that are in your visualization, in this case, subcategory. Let's bring back our start date and end date parameters. Let's also bring back our order date filter. Now we can see the values are the same. That's because we haven't linked it on the actual order month yet. Don't forget to replace your labels in here with your 
blended data source sales, not your current year data source sales. And now we can see we have the previous year values for each of these subcategories. Let's convert this into a dual axis graph and do some basic formatting to show current versus previous year. Let's change this all back to a bar graph first. Make sure you label your secondary data source properly so that we can tell the difference between the two measures. We'll call this PY blended. Let's edit these colors next and we'll make the PY color a light gray, a bit lighter than this. Next, reorder the PY data to be behind the current year and we'll make that graph a little bit larger. Let's make the current year graph a little bit smaller and we'll make the color a little bit transparent. Let's remove the labeling from the PY graph. Next, let's add some movement labels on as well. So create a calculated field. We'll do a very similar calculation that we did before where we compare the sum of the sales to the sum of the PY sales and then divide it by the PY sales to get the year on year movement. We'll call this year on year percent sales blended. Let's give this year on year movement the same formatting treatment as our other one. So we'll go to custom and we'll use this formula. So it'll show 0% with an up arrow for positive, 0% down arrow for negative, and just 0% for zero values. Let's go to our current year values and put that new formula into labels and see how that looks. We'll edit it and we'll just put them on the same line and we'll put the percentage in brackets and maybe make it a lighter shade of gray. Let's hide this header. Now our visualization is not only showing the sales, but also the previous year sales using this blended data source. Let's go to our trend graph and do something similar. Start by removing our old calculation to get a clean graph. Go to your blended data source and let's drag in the sales PY blended in here. We can see because order month is already in our visualization that the order month field is already correctly linked. Now let's give this the same formatting treatment as our other graph. So we'll change this into a dual axis. Let's make our PY graph a little bit larger. And let's make our current year graph a little bit smaller. We'll change the opacity to be a little bit lighter. And we'll reorder this so the PY is in the background. For our current year graph, let's drag these year on year labels in. And then we'll just hide these headers. Let's reapply our order date filter to the entire workbook. And let's go back to our dashboard to see how it looks now. So now we've done year on year comparisons in two different ways. For our summary section, we used an LOD calculation. And for these visualizations, we use the blended data source. Each method is going to have its pros and cons and limitations. For example, the LOD calculation doesn't work when your date field is in the visualization. However, it is a lot more lightweight than blending the entire data source. Which method you choose will depend on your project. Thank you for watching. If you've enjoyed this video or if you've learned something, please leave a like and subscribe. And if you have any feedback, leave it in the comments below.